like the sportsters like the first American muscle on two wheels. And there she goes. Harley Davidson's racing team perfected the bike. The fastest man has ever gone on two wheels. Slide you to the back of the seat. Harley Davidson acceleration. Ashley, thinking about what I'm going to say. Serious business. <laughs> Needs to go through some of the design process, tough yeah, decisions. Little. I know we went back and forth on this guy a few times. Yeah, I think it's, you know, about the experience when riding this bike. Let's screw up your lines. Yeah, <laughs> try not to. Hey. hey, Kyle. Let's do it. With any Harley Davidson, the engine is the heart of the motorcycle. And with Revolution Max, Pan America, and with Nightster, we've taken that really literally. We started with the engine, frames bolt to the front, subframes bolt to the back, uh, and that's what creates the motorcycle. We're delivering this powertrain with a, a brand new displacement. So 975 cc's, variable valve timing, a downdraft air intake system that really helps this engine deliver torque, deliver power. Seeing it finally come together is pretty exciting. There's nothing on this bike that doesn't need to be there. The sole of this motorcycle is you know, gritty and rebel and raw. And so that's where we get some of these cast looking finishes and really pull some of the surfaces forward and backwards. And that's how we play with your eye and give it visual interest. Yeah, the Revolution Max has a really interesting combination of all that technology, all that performance, the power, the torque. But at the same time, it's got all the craftsmanship that comes along with being built at Pilgrim Road here in Milwaukee. Rumble. The weight of the new Nightster is 485 pounds. You know, that's nearly an 80 pound reduction over Sportsters of today. Pull it up off the kickstand, you'll feel how light this is. And as you ride down the road, the handling that comes with it, those two come together and they really make for a rocket ship of a motorcycle once you throw your leg over this. And one of the biggest challenges with Nightster was trying to cram this like beast of an engine and fitting that into something that's recognizably Sportster that has that iconic silhouette that millions of people around the world are familiar with and know and love. That's probably one of the biggest points of tension in the project is how do you solve that combination of fuel, air volume, running into that proportion and silhouette that people expect. And in the end, the dual outboard shocks and the architecture of the motorcycle allowed a really radical solution to put the fuel underneath the seat. And that frees up the area that would traditionally be the fuel tank up here to become only airbox, and it allowed us to get this into the size of the old Sportster fuel tank. Yeah, there are other uh, benefits that we get from that too. When we move the fuel tank under, underneath the seat here, the center of gravity of the bike stays low, which actually helps to make this bike feel even lighter and more maneuverable. We've increased the lean angle by three to five degrees on each side of the bike compared to Sportsters of today. Uh, we have three ride modes, rain, road, and sport, especially riding this bike in sport mode. This bike is fast. You can run it all the way out to over 9,000 RPM, and it just keeps pulling and pulling and pulling the whole way. It almost feels like you have two different types of engine, right? Like if you're used to riding Harley-Davidson's, like the low end up to five, 6,000 RPM might feel a little bit familiar to you, but on top of that, You've got like this whole other rev range and this whole other character that really brings brings the horsepower, brings the speed and the exhilaration to this bike. So when we design a motorcycle, 
we're always making sure that the choices that we make enable customization and they allow riders and builders to make these bikes their own kind of instruments of expression. One small example of that on Nightster is that we're using a separate riser system and that you could put tall risers on there, you could put a differently shaped handlebar on there, but the choices that we've made in the design in that particular area, they're not precluding any style of motorcycle. You can build it with clip-ons, you can build it with a T-bar, you can build it with ape hangers, it's just really flexible. Hundreds of people at Harley Davidson have put their daytimes and their nighttimes and their weekends and their holidays into making this bike what it is here today. And so we're excited to be able to showcase that effort and uh, send it off into the world and see what riders do with it, see what builders do with it, see what kind of life it takes on beyond these walls. Alright, our win be good? Alright, yeah. first take, just see what happens mate. See what happens. I don't think anybody buys a Harley Davidson just because it's a motorcycle. I think it's because Harley Davidson is an emotion. You know, I spent 25 years working on Harleys, a lot of them are sportsters. But it's not just about the motorcycle, it's the vibe, it's the community. It's now my work, it's my life. My first Harley was a sportster. My girlfriend's first Harley was a sportster. First Harley I raced was a sportster. It's versatile. They're a great canvas for, for custom builds as well. You know, and now we've, we've taken it to the next generation of the, of the Sportster. And now I've got to redesign it. I mean, the good thing with, with custom building, there, there's no right and wrong. Uh, you know, it, it's like art, it's all, you know, down to someone's opinion. I kind of know how the bike is finished before I lay my hands on it. So I try to visualize it a lot before I start. Going over ideas, back and forth. Uh, stand back, have a coffee, have another look. And I'm building in my head. I like to take a bike, strip it back to kind of what we have here. And then you can see the bones of everything. You know, what you can sacrifice, what you can move. Ah, oh, there we go. So just try and break that off. We don't need that. Everything is redesigned. The technology is light years ahead of what we've had before and um, an animal of a motor. Loads and loads of power. It's very different to any sports that we've, we've ever seen, but when you take everything off and you look at the bare bones, the chassis, the, the motor, the swing and arm, the wheels, you know, it's very much a sports system. <laughs> You know, a simple design is sometimes the best design. It's an awesome looking machine, and that's kind of what the sports has been for many, many decades. If it's not broken, don't change it. I don't think of work as work. You know, this is just a way of life. It's what, what we do. I mean, my dad and I eat, sleep, and breathe motorcycles. Good afternoon, Perowitz. People ask me, how long you've been doing this? Well, the last job I had was 1970. <laughs> yeah. We definitely like to be noticed. We like to stick out. 
but it's a nice bright color and everyone will say, oh, which one's Jody Perowitz's bike? Oh, the teal one. Oh, I saw that one. I hope that when I'm to my dad's age, I still love what I do. Because he's still after doing it for 50 years. He's still here every day. I can tell the consistency of this paint, how long it takes before the, the stream turns to a drip. I can't wait to get all these together and on the bike. People say that this is magic. It can transform something into artwork. Art is something creative. It can be anything. Closer it's getting. Yeah. Do we have a ratchet that we can get in there? That? A socket? A little I gotta get on these studs. I think it looks so cool. <laughs> Another O ring. And then the space. Like that? Yeah. Yeah. It should be out. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that sounds so good. Can't wait till it actually runs. I know, me Literally. too. That's what I was thinking. Because yeah. it's gonna like, have some box. Too. Yeah, it will. Like even just a little bit of throttle, you can yeah. give it. It's like ha. Ah. What intrigues me is problem solving. I think of it as like a creative engineer. And, and thinking like, oh, that can't be done, and then figuring out a way and making it happen. You know, typically when I, when I start a build, I will literally spend more time staring at it than probably the time I spend executing it. There's a lot of different equations that need to work out in order to move forward with an idea. What I do, I think, take pride in is being able to build something that I know can handle on the track. Whenever I think of a hooligan bike, I think of like an older sporty, somebody picked up pretty cheap, found in someone's garage or dug it out of grandpa's barn or something, a few modifications to it, and then get out there and, and run it on the track, you know? That's sort of the whole concept with this. Um, after staring at this new platform for a while, it just kind of lent itself to moving in that direction. I just think it's got more classic lines. It's more traditional sportster. So that's kind of where we're heading uh, with this deal here. All right, so check this out. This is going to be the yellow, which is going to be our secondary, but pretty much our primary yeah. color. And that's this will be black. Right. Dude, even yeah. if we just, right, that's gonna work. Yeah, that's gonna work. I think if you ask any custom builder out there, if there's one particular thing on a, uh, a fully custom build, what really sets a lot of these builds apart, I think a real true custom exhaust does a lot. A lot of times I won't even build the exhaust until the rest of the build's done. And then that'll be the last piece of the puzzle. If the lines didn't quite line up the way I wanted it to on this exhaust, I'd probably be, be rebuilding it. Yeah, making a new one. 
But lines, yeah. I don't like to build things that I know aren't gonna last. I've got a few guys that ride really, really hard. So I know that we need to put uh, some of the best equipment that we can on their builds because they need it. They're gonna utilize it. To me, that's where it's at. Ja, der schwarze Motor, der macht mega viel aus. Sieht direkt viel brutaler aus. Wir machen ja, wir stehen ja darauf, alles ein bisschen kleiner und, und schmaler zu machen, alles ein bisschen kürzer. Also die Kombination aus Minimalismus und Design. Das Sportstar. Ja. Das ist äh, tatsächlich also perfekt. Jetzt sieht man Jetzt vollständig. Das ist komplett, ja. ja. Das ist ganz cool, auch vor allem für die Leute, die sich Gedanken über die Sportstar, die Nightstar gemacht haben. Wir haben das jetzt gemacht, dass wir was Frisches daraus gemacht haben. Und die freuen sich bestimmt auch, dass wir jetzt nichts Neues machen wollten. Also nicht die Linie verändern wollten, weil dann ist ja deren Konzept zur Nichte gemacht. Ja. Das Feintuning. Ja. Also eigentlich äh, war es genau richtig. Ja. Und er ist halt auch eine Kunst, weil du musst ja dieses moderne Paket auch wieder, eine, dem musst du ja auch eine klassische Linie geben. Ja. Und jetzt ist alles schön flach. Hat ja. auch echt eine gute Position. Also auch wenn man, wenn man weiter vorne sitzt als gedacht, aber das hat halt direkt diesen sportlichen Charakter, ne? Ja. Ja. Monster. <lacht> das ist geil. Geil, ja. Jetzt müssen wir nur noch fahren. Uh, anyone else? オートバイのカスタムビルダーになったのはもともとデザインの仕事がしたくて美術大学に行ったんですけどヨーロッパバイクのロッカーズっていう本かなを見てバイクすげえかっこいいと思って
それがあんまり肌に合わなくて、まあ、面白くなかったんでその時にずっとバイクに乗っててオートバイをカスタムするっていう仕事を,を知ってそれでビルダーになりたいカスタムバイクを作る仕事をしたいと思ってこの仕事をやっています。カスタムするバイクで一番うちうちっていうか僕が大切にしてるのはもう全体のバランスやっぱ一個一個のパーツがかっこよくてももうパーツの集合体なんでバイクって車のように一つのボディではないんで今回のこのバイクみたいにアルミを叩いて作ってるんですよね。でそうなると一人一人その同じものを作るっていうよりか個性みたいな、あのー、何でもそうだけどリンゴを100人描いたら100通りのリンゴがそれとバイクも一緒だと思うんですよ。
you know what? Our company is run by emotion. And I think that's very unique. And I hope it goes on forever. That's what I hope. <laughs>